You're listening to Hey Pal, What's New with John, Alex, and Greg. Hey Pal, What's New is a product of Sack of Sin Entertainment. Follow us on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, and all other social media platforms. Hey Pal, What's New can be found on Spotify, Podbean, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, and all other podcast locations. Or check us out at sackofsin.com or heypalwhatsnew.com. Warning, Hey Pal, What's New contains explicit content. John, Alex, and Greg are a pair of vulgar Gen Xers. If you are easily offended, please stop listening and go download a nice tame podcast like the Goop Podcast. You have been warned. Ernie. Bernie. Stop it. Mop it. Hippopotamus. Arapotamus. Oh boy, yeah, we, it's, it's another fine episode. That's right, it's Hey Pal, what's new, everybody? I'm Gregory, and that's John Alex over there. And we're doing a, a Good Friday early bird episode because oh, it's every Good Friday, yeah, oh, sorry. that's that's why the bitches are half off. <laughs> I, I need my chickens, yeah, root out red. <laughs> I, mean, I have no Easter eggs, I have nothing. Oh, I got shit, yeah, I gotta do some serious shopping. Why? Is the bunny going to come to your house? That's right. Big, uh, big, the uh, Easter Jesus. <laughs> I want Easter egg. I want Easter egg. I want Easter egg. Uh, stop it. <laughs> Shut up. Eh, hit the road. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, it's an early bird Friday because, you know, uh, it's Good Friday uh, for all you Catholics out there. And I had a half day, so... And I had a no day. So my brother from another mother came over, and we watched some movies, and we and we snuggled, and then now we're doing our podcast. And it's going to be a good day, everybody. Uh, no, it's going to be a chill weekend. I got my girls this weekend, and the, the oldest one took my car. So I'm kind of stranded. But I got the Mimi Mobile the, outside. I was going to say, you got the Mimi Mobile with all of its dents and dings. No, it's fine. It's not that bad. My dad used to call it the rolling ashtray. Oh. <laughs> well, you're going to take that fucking rolling ashtray home. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I guess. And that's why I was like, I, I told Zoe, she's like, oh, I could take Mimi's car. But I'm like, you might want to take mine because it's a little bit newer and safer and doesn't have ashes everywhere. Well, it kind of has some ashes in it. Right. But, you know, hey, Ash Wednesday is done. Now it's Good Friday. <laughs> And then uh, Easter Sunday and Holy Monday. He is risen. He is risen. I know him. Zombie Jesus. He is risen. Oh. And that's why we give eggs. <laughs> don't ask me why. I don't know. <laughs> What's with the rabbit? I did with the rabbit and the eggs, and the peeps. Ugh. I had the most uneventful week. Yeah. Tell yeah. me. Tell I did me, nothing. Pal. I did nothing. Oh, that's right. You had spring break this week, didn't you? Spring break. Bring I got me. up, I took care of the dogs, I took care of chickens, I, what else did I do fucking do? I played Call of Duty, I watched some TV shows, I drove my kids around. Yeah. Yeah, that's about it. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, that's how I was last weekend, because it's like, when I don't have the kids, I just sit like this and just, you know, watch a little TV. And I freaking watch YouTube Waiting and play. the button on your fur coat to pop? <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> And just play Xbox, yeah. It's, yeah. A, it's a you know, I'm gonna be 52 next week, oh, <laughs> so, like a deck of cards. That's right, 52 pickup. Oh shit! <laughs> yeah, you remember that game? We used to be like, hey, you don't want to play a game 52 pickup? Here you go. <laughs> just throw it at them. <laughs> there we go. I turned some channels off. Yeah. Uh, as far as my week went, uh, yeah, it was uh, just car. Stuff car, yeah. My my daughter's car. That's why she has mine because she's driving around because uh, old red, old red, old red's starting. To, it's got one hundred eighty five thousand miles on it, so it's getting there. And, and it's American. Yeah, <laughs> I I laughed at the guy too. I said uh, when he called and he was like, "Yeah, you know, there's a bunch of points. We're trying to get off the. We do the diagnostic. We're trying to get the check engine light off so we can get it through admissions and blah 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 blah." And I was like, "Yeah, let me tell you, dude." I am never going back to Chevy again because no. I bought a Chevy because uh, America. I, I had a, a it was American and I had a freaking eighty four Camaro my dad's old car that had like over two hundred thousand miles oh, yeah. and I changed a spark plug I think once or a belt and that was it 
so yeah, you know, uh, yeah, I'm just looking forward to hanging out with my kids and maybe painting some eggs and you mm. know, like that. We don't, you know, but yeah, I do have to run to the grocery store and play Easter Bunny like real quick. Oh. <laughs> That's okay. I'll be stopping at the store. Get me some jelly beans. I love me some oh, jelly beans. Dude, I, my girl bought me recently the all black. Mm. Mm-hmm. She's like, here you go, you psychopath. Yeah, <laughs> just like your man. That's right. So I had a little dish over there. I really, I was. There's like a hair on this mic that keeps tickling my face. It's my pubes. Don't worry about it. It must anyway. be one of my leftover beard hairs. <laughs> it could be. Yeah, look at these. We're clean cut in the summer. Uh, maybe now somebody will fuck me. No. <laughs> you know, that's why, you know, I've, I've learned uh, from one of your great, great. What am I, fucking Elmer Fudd at this point? Hello. Oh, my wife's great. Marriage. There was a really great quote that you told me once. I shave my balls because I hope somebody will lick them. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's exactly right. We go, or like when I take my medication, my kids are like, why are you stopping at CVS? I was like, I got to get my medication. They're like, why do you need your medication? So I don't kill all of you. <laughs> <laughs> I take my pills to keep from killing all you motherfuckers. That's right. I take the dole off to keep from killing y'all. We're just loud and proud. Who cares? But anyway, uh, yeah, we got a ton of stuff to talk yeah. about. Uh, John, you got any news? <laughs> oh, oh God, God, thank you. All right, it's news time, everybody. Oh, it is new, dude. There is. I don't even know where. Like, I was doing this. And I'm like, where do I even start? And you know what? I decided I really want to start at the bottom. Okay. With two quick reports here. The dealer who sold Michael K. Williams, star of The Wire and Lovecraft Country, Mm -hmm. he has pled guilty in a New York courtroom to selling fentanyl-laced heroin to Michael K. Williams. So he going to jail. Oh. I was hearing uh, other news reports about this. They were talking about the fact that this group that was selling this heroin, even after Michael K. Williams died and they knew it was... Their heroin that killed them. Yeah. They kept selling it. And I was like, well, they're fucking drug dealers. How are you shocked? Yeah. You're looking for morals? <laughs> um, just, okay. In related news, sort of, uh, Coolio's manager, Jarrell Posey, revealed that he died from a fentanyl overdose. Good old fentanyl. Oh, fentanyl. Come along and ride on a fentanyl voyage. <laughs> On the Phantom Highway. Yeah. The f- so the f- those oh. those are the ones that are like so not related to everything else. You know, you're going to start off with a goddamn death dedication. <laughs> um, All right. Now Star we got that Wars out of our showcase. System. Yes. This morning. You, it was this morning and it's what, six hours ahead, you said? Yeah. So like I got up at like, for some reason, I got up at 630 in the morning and I and I was like, wait a second, Star Wars Celebration started and they're six hours ahead. Right. So it was like Christmas morning. I just get on Twitter and oh, I'm like, oh, oh, oh look at that. Presents. Oh, my goodness. Got well, my Star Wars PJs on. I'm just sitting here going like this with my, you know, and the phone, too. <clears throat> oh, God, we're all very like burpy a, today. This is going to be like a tag team effort because there's so much coming out of this. Um, I don't even know where to start. Let Look, the one that we know the least about. Yeah, Star Wars Skeleton Crew, which is supposed to be a Goonies-inspired Disney Plus series that stars Jude Law, Mm -hmm. uh, created by John Watts. And while there is nothing, next to nothing is known about its plot, um, Lucas has addressed the series' tone, basically describing it as a galactic version of a classic emblem coming-of-age adventure films of the 80s. Yeah, I saw that they posted a couple of images. You see pictures of, like, Jude Law in a spaceship with a bunch of little kids. And they're all like, you know, (laughs) ride the magic school bus, everybody. (laughs) So you say ride the magic school bus, and I'm thinking, fuck, Jeffrey Epstein. (laughs) What is this? Is this a Star Wars property? Is this a Jeffrey Epstein biopic? (laughs) And it had a note on them. It said, signed, Epstein's mother. (laughs) For all you Welcome Back Cotter fans. (laughs) Now he gets it. (laughs) Excuse me, Mr. Cartier. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I'm excited about this because I like, you know, it, it looks it's they they're they're comparing it to like Goonies and Stranger Things, right? So it's just like it, apparently, you know, adult finds these kids and they get into shenanigans and stuff gets you know 
they get into trouble of some sort and they have to get out of it. Probably some of your adventure of the week kind of shit. Yeah, which the I'm thing fine thing that everybody with. is hating from shows like The Mandalorian and Bad Batch, but oh. I love that adventure of the week kind of thing. Oh, we'll, we'll get into that shit. And we'll I get... love what they do, and we'll get into it, the way they take those adventures of the week and tie them together. You go, well, shit, now it all makes sense. Of course, yeah. You got to um, hang out for a bit. You can't just be, go episode to episode. So the next bit of Star Wars news. Star Wars. The Acolyte uh, debuted fans' first look of that High Republic set Disney Plus being billed as sort of a frozen meets Kill Bill. Yeah, I, I, I didn't understand that comparison. I did find, flipping through the, the Twitter feed, that somebody kind of did like a sneaky pirate, like one minute clip of the right. trailer they showed. And from what I saw, it looked badass. Like yeah. it's just, I mean, it's they there's just one fight with a Jedi and a, an opposed Sith, but it looks very, Je- you know, very. We're, we're going back to the lightsabers and the freaking, you know, Ancient rebel stuff, and it, it, it you know, I'm, well, it's, it's, that's like the one I'm the most excited for. Uh, you maybe, I mean, I'm really excited about it, but more so, I'm excited about uh, Ahsoka, which we will talk about later. Oh boy, um, we got news that Andor is shooting for an August 2024 release date. Yeah, um, but not definite. They have no definite. And then yeah. the big uh, cream in your jeans news. We're getting three new. Star Wars movies are in production from the likes of, well, the first one will have uh, Daisy Ridley coming back as Rey takes place, I guess, 15 years after Rise of Skywalker. Right. Yeah. Um, and it's supposed to be her training the next rebuilding the Jedi order. Um, it's a series of films set in the universe, which are going to be done by, I- I'm going to murder this name. Charmaine obeyed. Chinoy, yeah, Dave Filoni, James, uh, James Mangold, um, Lucas executive Kathleen Kennedy. Know that these are new films will take place 15 years after the events of Rise of Skywalker. Um, they also noted that uh, Obey Chinoy noted her entry of the series will tell the rebuilding of the new Jedi Order. So I guess she's doing the very first. Yes, yeah, I, I was kind of confused with that because I think that Mangold, which I'm so excited for Mangold to do. I mean, between Logan and Ford versus oh, Ferrari. Yeah. Now, if this new Indiana Jones hits a freaking... This is what I'm scared of. Because Star Wars is Strapping always... everybody. Lucas, yeah, I know, right? Here we go. Uh, Lucasfilm is very reactionary. Right. So if this new Indiana Jones freaking shits the bed, he could, could be going bye-bye. Yeah. Which, which I re- is really fucking annoying. That's the, I mean, that's highly unlikely, though. Because <clears throat> you got to figure... He he did Andy in Indiana Jones first, right? So now they're like, "Hey man, how about you just jump over here and do some more Lucas?" They Jones must stuff. have seen it. They must have seen it. And they must be really proud of it. From what I see, it looks good. Okay. I hope it's a good the Indiana Jones. I hope it's a good ending to the series. I hope you we know, get some short round. I know we we better get some short rounds. We're getting short rounds in the acolyte. True. Yeah. So the short round, no matter where you go, that's right. There's no time for love, Doctor Jones. No. Um. So yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but I, you know, I, so Mangold, I'm super excited about because now he's, he's done some great stuff. Sure. I'd love to see him do a story. He he reminds me very much of a Tony Gilroy that he could put that seriousness back into it. Some mention too of Bryce Dallas Howard, whatever the fuck her name is. Bryce Dallas Howard. Right. Who just did the most recent episode of The Mandalorian, which ties into the previous episode with, um... The owls. Yeah, that episode was a Bryce Dallas Howard episode. Yeah, too. The, the frog ladies eating the, yeah, eggs. the frog. <laughs> yes, it kind of wraps it all around. But I think she's getting her hands deep into the Star Wars universe too now. So I don't. I, I picture a lot of these shows that are series. We'll see a lot of the same directors. Yeah, I mean she's great. I mean from what she's done, I, I think she might be acting in some of them too. Like she really knows her Star Wars. Yeah, I watched them yeah so I'm really excited about the Mangold one. The Filoni, obviously, because when I understand the 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 uh, the Mangold one's going to be like the birth of the Jedi, right? Like the beginning. The Filoni one is going to be more of ties into all the shows, okay? Like kind of like remember we were talking about like that big crossover event where we got Mando and Ahsoka and all this shit. He's going to take care of that because that's his babies. And then this new one by uh, Obeyed. Charmaine Obeyed um, is going to be the right one. So that right. would probably be... The I, first I don't one. know. I is, feel like that would be the first one. You think? I think so. I don't know. Yeah, because that's the one I think with Peaky Blinders guy writing it. Oh, okay. 
because uh, Lindelof shit the bed. He left, and now they got Peaky okay. Blinders guy, um, which, you know, that's the thing. It's like when they announce this stuff, I'm glad that they have – it sounds like they have more of a plan than they did with the other sequel trilogy. But at the same time, I'm just like, okay, but, you know, let's right. hope they stick the landing on these and not – you know, well, you got Filoni, which is good. I uh, You know, Mangold. Yeah, he's, I mean, Filoni is, like, untouchable. He's, like, he's fucking, Felonious. He's, like, freaking Billy Bats and Goodfellas. You yes. can't touch him. Get, um, <laughs> get this fucking shine box. <laughs> and, uh, you know, with Mangold, too, I mean, he's he has an awesome track record. Just between Logan and Ford versus Ferrari, I'll give him anything. So um, it all just depends on, Aso- uh, not Ahsoka, it all depends on, this Indiana Jones movie. Yeah. Oh. If he blows it that's out a, of the That's wall. a lot to put on one fucking movie, too. Yeah. But, um, you know, I really think it's got to be better than Crystal Skull. Um, Let's hope. If it's great. Well, that shit I took in your bathroom before is better than Crystal Skull. <sighs> right now. Seriously. I don't even think I've watched the whole thing. I watched it once, and that was one too many times. <laughs> M- Men in Black me, please. Yeah, seriously. Um, Yeah. So, I mean, that all depends. Like, if it's... If it... For some strange reason, which, I mean, we're going to talk about movies and stuff that we saw that have not been doing really well at the box Ooh. office, but still not bad movies. No. And I think it's just because we were all psyched about March being like, oh, my God, there's so many movies. There's Scream 6, there's John Wick 4, there's this, da, da, da. I think they kind of oversaturated it yeah. because these movies got kind of lost in the sauce a little bit. Like, Well, and we were talking before, like, I feel like nowadays, because you and I just watched Shazam. Shazam! And it's like one of those, they're throwing them out on demand because if people haven't seen that movie in the theaters in the first two weeks, they're not go. chances are they're not going to see it. Mm. You don't have those runs like you used to have where it was like, you know, four straight weeks at the box office because people are like, oh, fucking wait for it on demand. Yeah, not even that. It's just people, the the real hardcore people are going to watch it because they don't want to get spoiled. Right. Then by like the second week, it's just kind of like, uh, you know, like with me with Scream 6, right? I've been dying to see Scream 6. My daughter, Violet, just saw Scream 6 two, two or three days ago. So, I mean, this does this sounds very weird, but I am a very proud parent at this. Sure. Because <laughs> she texts me and she goes, oh, my God, Dad, Scream 6 was so awesome. It was great. I'm like, oh, cool. You went to see Scream 6. That's awesome. Who did you go with? You know, because it's an R-rated movie. And she goes, well, we bought Shazam tickets and then we just snuck into Scream 6. I'm like... God damn it. God damn You're that. the best. I taught, I, taught, I taught you well. Now, most people, that's what I love about my relationship with my daughters. They, they'll they tell me anything. And I'm not going to be like, you went on and well, on. I was you like, know you know what I did in Back to the Future 2? <laughs> you know, it's like, I brought a 12-pack in. Come on. I think it was the one of the funniest quotes from, from Zoe this week was we were talking about finances. And she's been talking about her job and how well she's doing. And she's, you know, saving up a lot of money. I'm like... You're so responsible, Zoe. I mean, it's great. She goes, I learned from the mistakes of others. <laughs> I was like, oh, shit. fuck you. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, enough about my awesome kids. But, uh... <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, I'm really excited about that. It sounds like they have some plan, and I think it really just depends on and, Indiana Jones. That- so that's the little news that's fit to print. John, you got any news? No. I have a guy I work with that prints out everything. Just to come into my office and tell us. I was like, did you really have to fucking print that? You couldn't just walk in? <laughs> like, uh, I got this uh, email here. I'm like, yeah, it's an email. Forward it to me. What are you printing it? You I fucking. You, I you might want to read it on. You <laughs> fucking loon. <laughs> I love the guy, but I'm like, why? He but for every the- tree they cut down, Gregory, they plant three in its place. Oh, do they? No. I remember <laughs> I donated $5 and built a, a had a tree grown in the Lorax forest. <clears throat> that old gag. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. So, uh, yeah. Um, so now that we've done our news, uh, I think the next thing we should do, do you have the new jingle popped up? Now, hold on there one second here, young fella. I was thinking about maybe the two of us get down in the old pickup truck, kneel down to the pig. Turn around the corner and hit one of them movie places where we can go sit down and eat a tub of popcorn and uh, <laughs> check out some previews. 
That's right. <laughs> Trailers. <laughs> Somebody was having fun in their uh, recording studio oh, last boy. night. And, uh, yeah, we have a new set. We like to talk about trailers. Because it seems like there's a... I mean, between all the stuff going on, there's a shit ton of trailers that came out. Oh, God, there is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I only got a couple that I watched that I felt like talking about. But you want you want to hit the, the fucking mother load right off the shot? Yeah, yeah. Ahsoka. Ahsoka, baby. Oh, my God. That trailer... I tried, I showed it to Kate, and Kate started watching... Uh, the Mandalorian with me the other night. Oh, good. She we watched ep- season one, episode one, and she fell asleep. <laughs> oh, Katie, <laughs> she's tra- that, she's trained herself to fall asleep in front of a TV. I, I don't swear. know what it is. She'll but, watch like I put a show on, just like. <laughs> At my house, we call it an all of a sudden. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> just because like, my mom will do that too. She'll sit there and be like flipping through channel. Oh, I'm gonna watch this movie, <laughs> and then wakes up. Literally, when the credits go on, I go, what happened? All of a sudden, if it, it's her laptop that she's doing it on, yeah, I would totally lemonparty.org that when she's asleep and wake up. And she goes, <laughs> just some horrific fucking porn. No, but yeah, the, the Ahsoka trailer. I mean, you're seeing a lot of those Rebels characters back. You are. Oh, boy. It's very exciting. I'm going to have to like brush up. That's why I like shows like um, web shows like Screen, uh, Screen Crush. Yes. Because he'll do like, you know, for the Mario movie, he's like 42 years and 12 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> he'll give you like the history of Mario from start to finish in like 12, like the abbreviated version of 12 minutes. So you're not sitting in the movie going like, wait, I don't, what the fuck is this thing? What yeah. is that? There's so many good YouTube channels on there, like Screen Crush. Man of Recaps is really good. I, I like that Ahsoka is leaning heavy into Jedi. It's going to be your Jedi centric show. You know, we had your mm-hmm. Obi Wan, but I feel like there wasn't as much like lightsaber Jedi shit in that. It was more of an Obi Wan story, and it was good because we needed a little bit of a break of the of the just the pew pew from kind la- of stuff from pew pew and laser swords. Yeah, yeah, you know, which 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 Andor was great for Mandalorian and still like that. Nobody's really besides the dark saber. Nobody's pulling out lightsaber. But the dark saber is like fucking Excalibur. It's like it doesn't. It, it is a lightsaber, but it doesn't. That's not what it has to be. It's not like it's a Jedi lightsaber. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I think definitely with all this new stuff coming in, we're going back into like right. lightsabers and Jedi and Force and all that stuff, which is great. Which is great. Um, but yeah, I do love you know Rosario kicking it as Ahsoka. Oh, you know, yeah. like I said, we have some Rebels characters showing up in there. We uh, it, there's mm-hmm. Satine's in there, which I was correct. So many people are like, you keep calling her Sabine. It's yeah. Satine. Satine Ren. Yeah, Satine Ren. But then there is a there's a I forget I had I I actually okay. put some notes on I here. Forget. You know, I, I've Bo-Katan's uh, sister is Satine, right. but I think there's Sabine is the Mandalorian that's in Rebels. Right. Satine is Bo-Katan's sister. Yeah. I, it it's too close. I I don't know. But anyway, yeah. Toby Wong, Toby, Toby Chong. Chong. Yeah. Toby be something. Uh, um, I'm excited that we're actually getting it this year because I was kind of afraid that they're, you know, because like we were talking about Disney Plus kind of pumping the brakes on a lot of stuff. Yeah. That they would kind of push this stuff aside a little bit, you know, but it seems like they're all guns blazing. They say it's August, so, which is good because we'll have Mando for another two s- episodes. Boo. Yeah, so Ooh. that'll take us to the end of April. Then it's like uh, May, June, July. Yeah, I don't Sabine think this... Wren was a Mandalorian warrior, explosives expert, and graffiti artist. Yeah, versus Satine, who was Bo-Katan's sister. Got it. There you go. Okay, I'm gonna draw a map like that thing from uh, Always Sunny yes. <laughs> like <this little laughs> with the strings. Yeah, <laughs> follow the logic. <laughs> so that's our big our big movie trailer. Yeah, there was no. a lot of other ones that came out. Uh, D, both DC and Marvel, everybody's everybody's putting their proverbial dick on the table. Oh boy, are they! Um, not related to superhero shit, though. I sent you the trailer for that movie, the documentary, still about oh. Michael J. Fox. Yeah, on Apple TV. I will watch the fuck out of anything Michael J. Fox, even though he is the anti Elvis and has no Elvis in him. That's right, Elvis is everywhere. He'll Except in Michael J. Fox. Yeah. He's even in Joan Rivers, but he's trying to get out. Yeah. And he's in Nutty Buddies, too. That's right. And cheeseburgers. <laughs> and cheeseburgers. Oh, man. I mean, he is he is an inspiration. Yeah. You know? And just the body of work that he's done. <laughs> and, you know, everybody knows him from, you know... Uh, Back to the Future Back and the from Fe- Family Ties. And Spin City and all that stuff. But then he's done, like... There's some movies that he's done that... Teen Wolf. Teen Wolf. 
But I'm trying to think of someone like Light of Day. Have you ever seen Light of Day? No. It was a movie. He was in a band with Joan Jett. Whoa. It's. Uh, I still remember the songs like "Dem Dem to the Light of Day." It, it's a freaking. It, it's just a story about a band, and and he's in the band with Joan Jett, and there's like a, you know, there's. It's just a typical like you know almost famous kind of. So movie it's called Light of Day. Yeah, Light of Day. Interesting. And then he was also in that. Uh, was it the Tommy Knockers? No, the Frightening. I don't yes. remember. Yeah, he's he's. He's always great. And then the fact that he is still just like all the struggles he went through with the park. Is, and he's just like, I ain't giving up. Like, you know, he's still with the same wife. He's just 1987, the light of day. Yeah, there it is. Look at look at the picture of Michael J. Fox with Joan Jett. Oh, he yeah. Makes, oh, look, he's got a mullet. <laughs> oh, yeah. But it's such a good movie. If you is ever it? get a chance, watch Light of Day. I wonder it, where you can find that movie. Let's look. 19- this is the beauty of the internet is I can click on something and just go show me all. And it's like, oh, would you? I love that over here. It's like, would you like to watch this where you can see it? Yeah. Where is it on here? Oh, uh, Amazon. Well, Amazon, obviously. No, I don't always... see it. Where's the Light wow. of Day Foundation? Oh, Amazon for 99 All watch options. Prime. Yeah. All right. You know what I say. Get on Prime for ninety nine cent. Time to bootleg. <laughs> yeah. It's. I don't know. I haven't seen it in a long. Maybe I'll watch that this weekend too. We'll both watch it and go. You know, Does it hold up? Yeah. Am I insane or not? Because I just remember it being like. I was like, not too many. I think maybe uh, maybe Pete, uh, our, our good friend Pete Sullivan, like he'll know. Like besides him and Pete, you know, besides myself and and, and young Peter. I think we're the only two who've ever seen the movie, and we're like, "Why isn't anybody talking about Light of Day?" It's freaking awesome. Um, so anyway, yeah, I mean, the Michael J. Fox one looks uh, amazing. Amazing. So it looks like it's going to make you cry. Yes, yes. So um, I'm, I'm always down for the uh, Alex P. Keaton. Other trailers? Oh yeah. I mean, looking at the trailers that we have listed on there, I mean, we'll start. We'll just go down the line here. So uh, the trailer for Blue Beetle came out. <sighs> Which is, I loved it. Kate was like, is that like DC's Iron Man now? It's a, If you watch it, yeah, like the trailer is, it's it's like a mixture between Iron Man, Venom, yeah. and Spider-Man. Well, yep. Spider-Man had the, the Tony Stark suit too, so it's kind of, I'm not too familiar with the comic book, and I know that he plays one of the Blue Beetles. There was actually two different people that played Blue Beetle, and they're like, the origin story of them, or, or just the the characters themselves, are vastly different. Okay. Um. So the people were like, "Oh, they're going this way with this storyline, which is cool." It looks it it looks like it has the the Ms. Marvel family dynamic in it. Very cool. You got George Lopez, Mister Electric, in it playing the dad. Senior Electricity Dad. Yeah. <laughs> I love George Lopez, so he's in it, and it just looks like DC is finally like you know, I shouldn't say like writing the ship, so. Yeah, I mean the the trailer looks amazing. It's got like the very. It's it just, I, I'm I'm all for it. You I'm know? all for and, it. And, uh, it. I don't know that much about Blue Beetle. That's why I'm all for it. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a pleasant surprise because sometimes when you go into these shows, especially with these comic book ones, you have a, a expectation of like, yeah, you know. Now I think we're at the point with these comic book shows, and I think Phase Four and some of these other ones, we're starting to now we have a little bit of kid gloves where we're like. We used to just walk into all these things, like, just expecting it to freaking blow our minds. Right. Now we're just like, yeah, it was all right. It was cool. Whatever. It didn't, it didn't hurt my feelings. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, it's A blowjob's not... a blowjob, man. Exactly. There's no such thing as bad pizza. Um, so you're just like, okay, this looks very... I mean, is it reinventing the wheel? No. No. Not at all. Um, is it... You but get it's giving this... us the content that we've been asking for. Yeah. More get, of it. And, you know, same thing with... Uh, you know, I hate to be all like wokey inclusion and all that stuff, but it's like it's good to see representation. Yeah, you absolutely. know, with Ms. Marvel with the with the Arabic Indian culture, and then you have Blue Beetle with the Hispanic, like you know. And I, I actually heard a really interesting stat that the movie making, uh, the movie going audience in the past year, thirty percent was Latino. Okay, so now they're getting a Latino Superman uh, superhero that they can go see. I think it's going to freaking... It's going to fucking blow up. It's going to blow up. But I have no expectations for Blue Beetle other than, hey, give me some good superhero 
fun stuff. And it's just well done. It, it looks like I said, it's not reinventing the wheel. It nope. should be a good time. And I, you know, I worry about DC because we we're all excited about getting the James Gunn slate. That's not going to happen until 2015. Oh, come. Gonna, 2015. 2000 what? Uh, 2025. 2025. Sorry. I oh, pipe. my God. Let me break out my TARDIS. I did a little uh, uh, universe, Spideyverse there over there for a second, which we're going to talk about. Um, So, yeah. I mean, so now it's like what we've been seeing, like the movie we're going to talk about later is like with Shazam and even The Flash and Blue Beetle. I get worried because it's like, well, these are good characters, man. We're now going to lose them, you know? I hope not. Maybe there's room for him, but it doesn't sound like Shazam. You know, like I keep teasing about Shazam. We're going to talk about it, but you know, it was uh, it's not doing well box no. office wise. So, no, who but knows? then again, nothing does after the first two weeks. So yeah. the next trailer, mm-hmm. I don't know how you felt about this one. Uh, Spider Verse, yeah, Into the Spider Verse, more of the same. Yeah. Um, I love the first Are one. Are they still splitting this up into two movies? I heard that was the rumor that the second part, like the Across the Spider-Verse, was going to be two different movies. Uh, I don't know, but I know that this one, I know it's it's going to be basically a trilogy from right. like, you know, Into the Spider-Verse, Across the Spider-Verse, Beyond the spider or something like that. Um, yeah, it looks fun. I mean, that was one of the movies where I'm a huge Spider-Man fan, but we've talked in the past about... My feelings on like animated movies and stuff, I get kind of like this is too babyish or so. Or right. I feel, I feel like as soon as I see animated, even though I've been ingrained with like Family Guy and Simpsons and South Park, I'm like, I see animated superhero, I'm like, it's gonna be for kids. And my daughter, who's also Violet, who's also a super Spider Man person, she's like, can we go see it? And I'm like, all right, I'll, that's Spider Man, I'll go see it. I love that movie. Oh, this Into the Spider-Verse? Into the Spider-Verse. But here's my problem with this one. Okay. I feel like that animation style that made it so unique and was, in my opinion, part of the success of mm-hmm. Into the Spider-Verse, Yeah, that they are hooking their wagon up to that train for this movie, and I think they're overdoing it. It looks a little like, a, I mean, it looks a lot. Yeah, you it know? looks very, very busy to the point where it's going to be like, I'll be focusing on that shit and not really the movie the entire time I'm watching it. Yeah. Now, hopefully it doesn't jump styles the way the trailer has. It's like you're one thing, next thing, it melds into the next. I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? I think that's going to be a little... I I, I have a feeling that it's going to be just a small part of it. Okay. At least I hope so. God, I hope so. Yeah. I mean, just the, the overall story. Because like, I love the Miles Morales story. Yeah. And... You know, the whole Spider-Gwen thing is awesome. And the Peter B. Parker relationship is great. You know, so it's like, give me more of that. You know, yeah. and I love the animation style. It looks like you're watching a comic book open right. and, you know, like it panels and everything. So I'm hopeful for right, it. But, but I yeah. think the first one did it in such a way that it wasn't distracting. No. And I feel like from watching this trailer, there's a lot more of that. And it's going to be distracting. I Yeah. Let's, let's hope that it's not. Remember like, us people with ADHD. That's true. Yeah. I mean, I always have high hopes for it. I'll definitely go see it just because I love the Miles storyline. So They got my money. Yeah, exactly, baby. You know, I'll, I'll catch it on the it. I'll, ca- I'll catch it, it on stream. It better deliver because they got my money, but if this one doesn't deliver, the next one, oh, yeah. I'll be watching it like I watch freaking Shazam. Yeah. We'll just wait. I mean, that's the way it is now. I mean, because we talked about March being so stacked right? that, you know, I just... Honestly, I didn't have time. No. It was just, you know, thank God for uh, little tracks that get sent to me in the drive. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) You know, don't don't worry. I I just got a copy of uh, The Light of Day. All right. So, so we'll watch that this weekend. And uh, uh, I'll, I'll leave you with a copy of that before I go. Yeah, get me a Scream 6, too, will you? <laughs> uh, if I can. I haven't seen it. My wife, and, my wife and daughter went to the theater and saw that together. I know. I heard it was really, really good. I'm Our sorry. next trailer happens to be dun, dun, Secret dun, Invasion. Dun, 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 dun. I'll keep my eye on you. Did you watch the Secret Invasion trailer? I did. And I don't know what the fuck's I, going on. I was on. about to say, if, if I didn't know that it has something to do with the scrolls and the uh, yeah. scrolls that have invaded Earth on so many levels and that the one faction of scrolls has been trying to battle this for a long time and now they're bringing Nick Fury back into it to help with that. Beyond yeah. that, I don't know what the fuck is going on. No. I mean, it looks cool. You know, I like the whole, uh, the characters involved. It's more of like the political... 
Winter Soldier looking type right. stuff, which I I mean I just recently watched Winter Soldier again. It was on cable. And I was like, God damn, that's a great movie. That's one of those ones that's like way up there. Like, rewatchability score of about an eight out of ten. Yeah. That one in, in Civil War too. Like yep. first Avenger, I, I really I mean the whole Captain America tri- trilogy. So I, I'm I'm lost with Secret Invasion. I am too. From what I understand, you know, Nick Fury in the one of the end credit scenes of Spider Man, he yes. was on with the scrolls, you know, hanging out in space. Um, you know, old freaking patch eye was in space and now he's come back down because shit's about to blow up right with the scrollies um yeah okay i mean it i don't know i don't know i mean it looks great i like all the characters in it you got a jewy Jew, julie <laughs> jewy lewis jewy lewis. lewis in the news <laughs> jewy lewis and the <laughs> jewy lewis and the jews <laughs> yeah exactly uh you know the, the bitch from seinfeld's in it <laughs> yes julia louise dreyfus <laughs> yes thank you and uh you know you in got relation Nick to Fury. richard dreyfus i don't know no just <laughs> keep going I'm not going to sit here and have you do an autopsy on a goddamn fish and let that kidney boy spill out all over the dock. <laughs> anyway, we're going to need a bigger boat. Wow. Yeah, that wasn't even Dreyfus either. No. <laughs> freaking... um, again, I'll watch it. I'm just afraid that, you know, I feel like the other Marvel stuff had already a big enough audience, but with people not understanding what the fuck this is supposed to be about. Yeah. I don't know if it's going to. It's going to have the nerd audience, but I don't think they're going to have the, you know, let's put it this way. I'll watch it. You'll watch it. I don't know that my wife will watch it. No. There no. you go. That's that's my hot take on it. I have, you know, I'm going in with kind of low expectations. Secret Invasion. Yeah. Scrolls and old Nikki Fury. That's I'm down. about all I got. I'm down for it. They've got us nerds, the people who will watch no matter what. The common folk, I don't know that they got them with that. I, li- I, I like the old... Uh, the Don Cheadle, a little war machine and stuff. So there's there's people in there. Yeah. I get it. Well, that's all I got for trailers. You got any more trailers? No, oh, man. No. Now, hold on there one second here, young fella. I was thinking about maybe the two of us get down in the old pickup truck, needle down to the piggly wiggly, turn around the corner and hit one of them movie plexes where we can go sit down and eat a tub of popcorn and uh, <laughs> check out some preview. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, okay, TV movie. I watched a new TV show this week. It's yeah, not let, really new. Let's go TV because movies we have. You have one. I I was late to the party with one, and then we watched one together. Oh, so we each did solo, and then we did a mutual masturbation. That's right. <laughs> um, I watched this show. It's not new. It's about eight episodes in. I started watching. It's called Shelved. It takes place in this poor library, a library in a poor area, some Canadian town. Um, but it's got a very community vibe. So if you like community, I think you'll dig this show. Okay. Because, so yeah. it's a very funny show. Let's hope it doesn't get shelved. <laughs> um, Let's hope that shelved doesn't get shelved. Oh, fuck off! <laughs> Wow. That's my revenge for all those freaking... Uh, Garbage day! That's <laughs> my revenge for all those fucking... In the arms of the angel. Oh. <laughs> she got me on last week. Oh. You son of a bitch. <laughs> um, and the only other thing I really wish wanted to mention is I did start watching season two of Schmigadoon. Schmigadoon! Which you still have yet to watch. Um, no, I haven't! <laughs> it's, it's For those who don't know, it's this... Uh, what's his name? Key? Is it Key or P- Key? The taller, bald guy. <laughs> Key and Peele. Uh, that would be Keenan Michael Key. Okay. It's him and this other girl. Um, they are married. Their marriage is kind of in. They find in the woods, stumble upon this land called Schmigadoon, which is all fucking like Music Man yeah. era musicals. So season two. They're back in the real world. They found that they've fallen back in love with each other. And it's kind of like they do a great passage of time watching like them in that that honeymoon phase of like being back in the world and back in love with each other to where they kind of fall into that rut okay. again. And they search out to go back to Schmigadoon, which they find you can't go back to Schmigadoon. But they do wind up in a place that's like Schmigadoon called Schmicago. 
<laughs> Chicago. So it's a very Chicago musical cabaret. Oh, that's funny. Jo- like the, it's got that, and and they ad- fully address it right in the beginning. She's like, yeah, this is the time when like they do it, and she makes fun of that period of musical theater. Yeah, which is hilarious. Um, it's kind of man. I'm gonna hang in there a little bit longer and see what I can. If I can, yeah, stand you, it. you showed me the first the trailer for the first season. I thought it was hysterical. Oh, it was like, hysterical. It's like Oklahoma type yep. musicals. Now this one, Chicago. That's cool. We'll yeah, see. I gotta stop playing Red Dead Redemption and watching YouTube. Again, it, again, it's not my it's not my favorite musical theater period. That whole Chicago cabaret period. But, okay, you know, I guess I'm kind of you know, it's something give different. Me some you know. Keep yeah, keep pimping. watching Pew Pew Star Wars and superheroes like, like like myself. So those are the new TV that I watched. I don't take it for what it's worth. Yeah, hey man, you know we're all looking for something to watch. But we did watch Yellow Jackets. We sure did. Now the new se- the new episode of Yellow Jackets. It was a continuation. It wasn't really. Um, I still adore the show. It's like one of my favorite shows of all time. Sure. Um, and it was really hard to top. Last week's when they finally went. Oh my god! Went yeah. cannibal. Um, so it was kind of, kind of the aftermath of that, and a little bit more Lottie story, a little bit more. Um, I always forget her name, Taisha. I think it is, or I always forget. But the 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 the, the senator one. Um, but yeah, I mean, I didn't really expect much. It no. wasn't, you know. So it was just kind of an aftermath. Not with the payoff we had last week of like, you know. <laughs> You know, cannibalism. Yeah. I mean, there's definitely some disturbing stuff in it. And, uh, you know, there's the one with Shauna going, you know, uh, there's a scene where her and her husband get carjacked and she ends up getting the gun. And then she goes to, you know, she she tracks the car down. I guess she had some kind of GPS thing in it and shows up with the gun and she starts threatening the guy. And the guy's like, take it easy there because she doesn't look very Your hand's shaking. You ever yeah. shot someone before? Yeah, she's like, have you ever peeled the skin <clears throat> off a human body before? And then she just starts going into detail about it. That was cool. That was. Um, but yeah, I, you know, I don't know. It's I love pretty the, early. I love the look she gives her husband. And he's like, how'd the minivan come back? And she's just getting that look like, I went and fucking got it, you pussy. Yeah. <laughs> God damn Jeff, he's a freaking wiener. <laughs> God damn it, Jeff. Why the fuck did he she fuck him? I don't know, but yeah, I mean she could After been... she ate his boyfriend his well, girlfriend. Well, yeah, that's because Becky wasn't putting out, so uh they went the old So wait, she's basically got some Becky and some Becky's boyfriend in her. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Bam. Yeah, it was like mm. <laughs> <laughs> I just love the one too where the guy, the coach comes walking in and he's just leaning there and you just hear his stomach going oh, and the girl goes you hungry? Because <laughs> I am. <laughs> or Van when they she comes out and Ty she's like, oh my god she she totally blocked out what they did. Oh yeah. And Van goes like, she's like, no, I didn't do it. I didn't. And Van goes, I was right next to you. We did it together. You ate her face. Yeah. <laughs> it was just like, oh my god. I don't know that I'm going to be able to ever eat somebody's face. Yeah, but uh, anyway, yeah, Yellow Jackets. I mean, I'm I'm still way into it. Um, what else do we got here on the The TV? Mandalorian. Mando. I had a big old chubby for this week's Mando. I'm sorry. No, I, it's very divided, this Mando. Oh, my God, it is. Because people are just not into that, you know, political and it's like it's like Law and Order meets Star Wars. Yeah, I mean, no, this, this episode was really a little bit more like I uh, the things I kept thinking of was like uh, Bo-Katan and Mando go to Disney World, you know, yeah. to ride the monorail. Then it's like it, the cameos. Um, hanging out on Galaxy's Edge. Yeah, well. it really felt like that, and it was kind of like little side missions. It's like because you know what it was. I think every they, they cock teased. They were flying in, and they see the Mando crew over there. Yeah. So you think that's where they're going? They're gonna have this big battle. You know, they're gonna they're gonna recruit these other Mandalorians and everything like that. And it's gonna be the. And then we we ended up going to Disneyland, and we get Jack Black and fucking Lizzo, which you know. Do we ship them, I guess? No. That would be an interesting freaking no. porno. <laughs> but uh, y- you know what it was? It's not that they're... Lizzo, keep the playing the flute. Yeah. I'm sorry. You know, she was, you know, she's beautiful and all that, and she's a great singer and a Stick talented musician. Yeah. D- don't do the acting stuff. It's okay. I mean, look, I love them, <laughs> but fucking even Bill Burr in The Mandalorian was a little... When so you, what? Fucking people in space talk like they're from Boston. Yeah, 
from Boston. <laughs> <laughs> I go over there. <laughs> Especially since Bill Burr, before going into The Mandalorian, if you ever listen to his Monday morning podcast, used to shit on Star Wars. Oh, yeah. I don't get this stupid shit, but I know this stupid motherfucker. And then all of a sudden he's like, well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I want to put money in my pocket. I'll I, take it. I had a friend. They wanted me to be in it. Now I really like it. You're like, okay, whatever. Um, but it's it's something about Star Wars where you put well-known people in it. And they've right. been doing that. It gives it a little bit more legitimacy to the average common folk, not just our... Uh, but but I throws, think it annoys the shit out of the nerd people. It throws me off because I... I you know, Jack Black. I love Jack Black. I oh, I had to watch that fucking whole episode twice just to get past Jack Black. Yeah, I mean, he's he's a presence, you know? Yeah. So when he shows up, you're like, with that fucking ridiculous beard, uh, Circa John two weeks ago. <laughs> I was going to say, I gave him my beard. <laughs> you, t- you took his beard. Um, you know, y- you watch that and you're like, it just throws me out of it because I'm so used to watching Star Wars. And then you Wars. give me Doc Brown. Doc Brown. One, he was he almost hit the one point two one gigawatts. Yeah, you know. Hi, let me tell you that, Marty. <laughs> that was pretty good. Uh, <laughs> I'm a uh, cook. You don't want to give me the Genesis device. Oh, Okey doke. What does the yellow light mean? Slow down. What does? <laughs> a classic taxi episode. Yes. If you've never but, seen it, but yeah, it takes you out of it. It kind of like. <clears throat> takes away from what you're watching and you're just focusing on that yeah and then it was kind of like we got to the end and 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 the thing about it is that you know the Bogotan goes up there and she's like you know we want to recruit you but they're all like they have no respect for her because she doesn't have the dark saber um but then something happened four episodes ago right where Bo <clears throat> it was the same thing as she was in the creed it was kind of like right. oh yeah she she bathed in the waters, and now she didn't take her helmet off, so now she's redeemed. Same thing with the dark saber. It was like, well, wait a second, um, man. You know, uh, Din was captured by that alien. Right. Bo saved him, so in essence, she got the dark. So they're like, he goes, here you go. Right. Now I'm like, so he lost the dark saber to that robot thing, and then. The robot thing threw the dark saber down because it just wanted to suck the juice out of him. And then she picked it up and battled him, distri- defeated him in a battle. And, and that's the thing. Because T- a lot of people have pointed, I- I've heard some talk of pointing to the fact that, like, you know, um, Darth Maul had the dark saber. And yep. that, <clears throat> let's see, there's a, oh my God, I don't even know where to go with all this because Ahsoka had it. But the idea is that you can only we- win the dark saber in battle. Yes. But. None of those people that they point to ever beat someone in a battle with the dark saber. So it's like if you yeah. have the dark saber, the only way I can take that from you is in a battle where you are using the dark saber, and I defeat you. And some of the other ones were not that way. So some of these people are like, "Well, no, it really belongs to this person because they beat so and so who beat so and so." It all it doesn't seems, hold. It all seems like everybody won the dark saber on a technicality. Right. Except for Din. Right. Because he beat Moff Gideon, who had the Darksaber, and he got it. You're right. Everybody, but it was and like. to a degree, even now, Bo Katan, I feel like she's kind of got it on technicality because she, she picked it up off the ground. Yeah. I mean, it, when everything with it is, you know, the thing that I wanted to see was even though I love the way Bo, uh, and Bo Katan, and, and Din are working together, kind of like a buddy cop thing. Um, I wanted to see those two square off. Now, she doesn't have to fucking stab and kill him. She just has to defeat him in battle. Right. So I would have wanted to see, like, you know, when you watch, you know, when we watched the prequels and all we were waiting for is to see that Obi-Wan and Vader fight. Right. Or, like, you know, the Luke Skywalker and Vader. It, it basically, insert Vader and some other person. Um, But you want to see... You, you're building up to all that. And this one, they built it up and you're like oh um they're, oh, we're not gonna follow you you don't have the dark saber well you know as a matter of fact hmm four episodes ago you did this so yeah, here you go and just hands it to her well he says that uh, she's like i can't take that because it and he, he goes well actually you could have said i that. lost i lost it in battle to someone else and she defeated that person so she won it from them, so actually it is rightfully hers. Look, I don't know that that for this story, 
the two of them fighting each other works because I think what we're spo- we're supposed to be re- rooting for them. Yeah. And that pits us against like picking sides with them. We're supposed to be kind of rooting for them as a team to bring back Mandalore. Yeah, and and you know I think Bo Katan deserves the dark. You know she should have the dark saber. I think she should be the leader of Mandalore. But it's just do it. I I just I don't like all the technicality stuff. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I mean, it, Star Wars is Star Wars. I am one of those people that very rarely will I watch a Star Wars thing. And say it's complete turds. Right. Um, Rise of Skywalker and basically Attack of the Clones to a degree. Well, um, other than that, you know, sure, you you build up stuff in your head. Being Star Wars fan since I was eight years old, of like, you know, oh my god, I want it to be this. I want it to be this. And when it's not, people get their freaking panties sure. in a bunch, and sure. you're like, dude, it's Star Wars. It's great. It's fun. It's not. It's it, not the Holy Bible. It's not a religion. Like, stop. Like, yeah, you know. It's not Dianetics, goddammit. <laughs> um, now, now we were talking before, and as I sat on it and thought about it, you were talking about the fact that, like, it's eight episodes. So when you have an episode like this where it feels like not much is happening, everybody kind of gets, like, annoyed because, like, well, there's eight episodes, and we just wasted one on this. But if we just told the story that the overall story they're trying to tell, yeah, it would be, like, four, three episodes. Yeah. Yeah. You could tell which series... We're stretched out like Obi Wan, where right. they stretched it out. That could have been a two hour movie. There's some where you want to have a bunch of episodes, and look, people are never going to be satisfied. It's yeah. like with The Last of Us, that was an hour. Everybody was super hyped, and like, man, those only thirty five minute episodes. It's like you know, like it, if it's telling the story, and there's like an arc, I'm happy with it, right? You know. Uh, you know, it's Star Wars. I'll take what I can get. Yeah, they're universe building. They're bringing you into a world and getting you invested in that world and making it more real. And I think that's what episodes, these these side episodes like this do for you is it brings you more into that universe so that you really feel what's going on in, in the universe at that point. You know, the people who are struggling, the, the planets that had to do things like, look... It, when everything turned over, we were on the wrong side, but they've given us a second chance, so we're turning it into a paradise. Yeah, yeah, so. and it, it's interesting to see all the different planets, how they deal with certain things, and that's why we have all these different shows. I call it the uh, the Cloverfield <laughs> effect. When I watched the first Cloverfield movie, which I love, you know, you watch that, and then I heard stories that they were going to make other ones, and I was like, stuff like that where there's an incident or there's something going on, you go... I wonder what that guy was doing when yeah. this happened. I wonder what that guy was doing when yep. that happened. What happened? Like, how did that person? Like, there was a, a talk about um, our girl from Yellow Jackets. Um, I always forget her name, Melanie Linsky. She was talking about she she wanted she would love to have done or you know had an idea for her Kathleen character in Last of Us. They should do a prequel show on that. And I'm like, right? I don't. Like, how did she get there? Was it, you know, so there's always things you can build on. But, you know, yeah, I mean, guys, it's all right. You know, it was it the best episode in the world. No, I'm going to catch shit for this one. What? Going for Margarita with Kristen, Brando and John. It's my wife. She's going with the people from work or yeah. say the girls from work. So I just wrote. So a double date. <laughs> 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 um. You better watch your freaking browser because Lemon Party's coming on. <laughs> She's not even listening. That's right. That's why we can get she away said, with it. She just w- said said just one drink. Famous last words. Yeah. That's what I used to say all the time. My red solo cup at the keg party always was one beer because it just kept getting down and I'd fill it up again. Down That's and right. fill it up again. It was same cup, same drink. Re- you know, I, ne- I never let it get empty. That's the secret. Yeah. It's always the same drink because I never let it get empty. It'd be like three quarters empty or a quarter full, and I'd be like, let me top this off. Yep. It's still got some of that original mixture in there. You got to keep that shit going. Um, Okay, so TV, we good? Yeah, I think really Mandalorian and Yellow Jackets are like the two big ones we've been watching, and you did give us some new ones to talk about. Um, Movies. Movies. I, I had my new movie. I finally got to see that movie, 65. Yes. With speaking of Star Wars, Kylo Ren. I can never remember his fucking name. Adam Adam Driver. Adam Driver. Driver, don't even know her. <laughs> um I heard it was okay. It was meh. It look, I I will give it this. I was confused as to what it was about from the trailer. 
<clears throat> I knew it had something to do with landing on Earth 65 million years ago, and I was under the impression like, oh, he kind of took off in this like spaceship and time travel fucking Mark Wahlberg and rides the pl- in the Planet of the Apes movie style. Yeah. And it's went back ape. 65 million years, but he didn't. He was flying from another planet and crash landed on Earth 65 million years ago when there was no people and the dinosaurs just in time for the big fucking comet to hit the Earth that wiped out the dinosaurs. Oh. So it's all about him and this one lone survivor girl trying to get off and trying to get out of there. Um, it was okay. I'm glad I watched it because I've been dying to see it, and now it's like, okay, I saw it. Yeah. I will never watch it again. No, you know, and it was weird because that just kind of came out of nowhere. There was no hype for it. No. I never heard about it, and all of a sudden people were like, yeah, I'm going to see 65. I'm like, what, what the is hell that the is that? the baseball movie? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when wasn't, I'm, wasn't that a when baseball? I'm 64 the wasn't sequel. that a baseball movie 65 asterisk oh there was something there. oh was, shit my computer just went to sleep please do not let this okay all right are we still on we still, yeah, on? We're still we hello okay. we're still here i'm mr chitlin mr chitlin <laughs> mr chitlin all right yeah let's get to some moves um what was your late to the party movie well finally about my late to the party um are you? No, okay. I don't know what I'm. I, I was. I was. Going, I saw you hitting buttons. I didn't know if you were going to do it, but uh, you don't have to. Hey, uh, hey, I'll do that. This is a great party. Uh, love your hair over there. Hey, uh, I just checked out this new movie that was on the HBO Max Prime. Thing. Uh, have you ever seen that brand new movie, uh, Goodfellas? Fuck! I offered you a chance when we could have done something, and you blew it. You blew it. Yeah, you don't have to play the whole thing. <laughs> I, I, like, I can't help it. I, I was actually going to send you a whole, like, let's, let's cut out the whole, ladies and gentlemen. Blah, blah, blah. Anyway, uh, I was late to the party. You are late to the party. But I did watch some motherfucking cocaine bear. Oh. Cocaine and bear. And what was your Finally take? saw it. It was freaking stupid. <laughs> really? I I enjoyed it. It was it was silly as shit. Yeah. Um. The acting was horrible. Yes. Um, yeah. But, you know, hey, look. On purpose. Like I said, going into a movie, Cocaine Bear, I wasn't expecting Amadeus, no. right? Exactly. Um, it was good. I mean, I enjoyed it. it I think I overhyped it in my. Yeah. I was like, oh, man, this is going to be crazy. I watched it. I'm like, the ambulance scene, that made the whole movie. Yes. The, the, you see it in the trailer, everybody. You see the bear jumping into the thing. Yeah. Uh, that whole what they don't show you, <laughs> yeah. The sequence of that whole yes thing was the best part. Yeah, that was crazy. Um, the whole story about Ray Liotta and they're trying to get the cocaine, and they, you know, uh, they, you know, the mother gets involved. And it's, it, it were was, you waiting for Ray, Ray Liotta to just go, Karen? We needed the money. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they were never gonna find the Karen. <laughs> no, he. I mean, he was good, but it was. And, you know, you got uh, Ice Cube's son. And it was funny. It was good. Yeah. I mean, it was definitely, I don't know. It, it wasn't a long movie. Right? It was like maybe no. 90 minutes tops. So, yeah, I, I'm glad that I finally saw it. Um, yeah, I mean, maybe like a two and a half, three out of five pals. Okay. It was fun. <laughs> like, I would just watch, if I was on YouTube, I would just watch the ambulance sequence over and over and over. That's all you really need to that see. That is all you really need. Um, don't worry about the story plot, you know, the story and the plot and no. all that shit. Just go in looking at a CGI cocaine out bear and have a good time. I can't wait for the sequel. That's right. Alligator, freaking heroin alligator. <laughs> or, I don't know, f- fucking fentanyl flamingo. <laughs> <laughs> fentanyl shark. <laughs> yeah, no, it was good. It was uh, it was good. Uh, so what was the... Uh, oh, no, you talked about 65. I talked about the cocaine bear. And then we just watched Shazam! Fury of the Gods. Oh, Fury of the Gods, yeah. So yet another late to the party. But hey, man, we watched it. And uh, well, how was your feeling about it? I liked it. I enjoyed it. Again, I don't know that I'll ever watch it again. I'm glad I watched it. It, it just seemed... It, it, it was know, a I, fun movie. I, I feel bad for it. That it's shitting so bad at the box office, which right. a lot of these superhero, I mean, even Ant Man, uh, Shazam, I think just because of the whole DC thing we were talking about before, where it's kind of unclear. Like, why am I going to go to the theater and invest in this movie, Shazam, when if he's not going to be around anymore? If this is it. Um, and I mean, they even left that movie open at the end for like a third Shazam movie. Yeah. Well, I think when they shot it, you know, because this was pushed. Or him to be on to uh, Peacemaker. 
Yeah. And join the Justice Society. Look, I would be totally down with keeping Shazam in the DCU. Like, yeah. I, you know, as much as people shit on it and we're like, eh, it did do well at the box office. I'm glad I saw it. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the first Shazam. The second one, I'm like, I was kind of rooting for it because I'm like, I hope that they stick this, you know, stick and I, this I around. love the little cameo towards the end of the guy who who was the original Billy Batson from the show. The kid. He was yeah. the kid. Yeah, you pointed that and out. they so. got him in the Shazam shirt and everything. Because I used to love that show when oh, I was yeah. a kid. Anything superhero back then. 70s Incredible Hulk, Shazam, all that stuff. Um, yeah, it was a lot of fun. You know, I think the adult Shazams were a little bit too, you know, they're supposed to be kids. I think yeah. They're a little bit too, like, you know, Billy Bats is supposed to be 18. Yeah. And he's talking still like he's like five. Yes. You know, uh, some of them, it, of course, the younger one was still like, oh, look, kitties and unicorns and stuff. Sure. I get it. She's like eight, you know, but, or, or very young. But like the teenager kind of ones, you're like. You're still acting like an immature asshole. I mean, maybe teenagers do still. I don't know. I have a 17 year old, but she seems very, uh, she's an old soul. Um, that was the only thing. But like, yeah, I would love to see. I, I mean, definitely if you get a chance, now that it's out on streaming, yeah, watch it. Yeah. I like, I still haven't watched Black Adam just because it has a stink on it. Oh. Um, and people have said, eh, it's a good 90s kind of style romp. And I'm like, eh. But like Shazam, I love the first one, so that's why I wanted to see this one. Okay, Black Adam, I, I just I'm rocked <clears> out. I don't really give a shit. Um, and plus, that's we already know that's Dunsky. Yeah. Um, I just really hope that Black Adam's Dunsky. <laughs> Black Adam's is that's out. okay because because Dwayne the Rock Johnson has put his energies into a fucking live action Moana. You're welcome. Seriously, <laughs> the, the trailer, the the it, the announcement trailer for that is douche and indu- douche chill inducing. Yeah, I love you know, I love I, the Rock, but come on, dude, he's very inspirational on his uh, Instagram. You know, when I'm eating freaking Seven Eleven nachos at two in the morning and he's out working out, I'm like, yeah, I could be like that. <laughs> well, Thursdays is arm day because <laughs> your arms better be fucking swole. <laughs> Check that guy out. He's great. Um, so I did like it. It was it was a good movie. It was I was glad I watched it. It was fun. Dare I say, give it a three and a half out of five. Yeah, absolutely, mm-hmm. absolutely three and a half. I don't think there's some people like I'm a boy. Justin um, is out there giving us the whole lowdown about, and I got to get to that. I forgot to get to that in the news. Um, I will read that from him because it's a throwback to what we were talking about last week. But Justin really, I mean, Paul from the Multiverse fan cast yep. and Justin both are like, oh, it's so good, it's so good. I think I think if your expectation was low, yeah, it's good, it's great. Yeah. I didn't have high expectations, and it met my not high expectations. Yeah, I was going in low, I was lowballing it going in, so I was like, all right, that was good. That was worth the, the price of nothing. <laughs> So yeah, Shazam. So that that would go with movies. I just want to yeah. touch on this. I got a message from someone um, to a touch on to touch on your last ke- podcast about Kevin Smith. Apparently, he did stop smoking complete. Did not stop smoking completely. What? He gave a friend of mine quote some of his weed when he quit. And I will say some jokingly, jokingly, I was told it was a large amount. <laughs> yeah. He was smoking a crazy amount of weed. And a quote from uh, a quote to me from a source close to Kevin was his marital issues were minor, but there um, there have they have gotten better since he quit smoking. Oh, good. And that's the end of the quote. I don't believe there were any other substance abuse issues. He's been spending a shit ton of time in New Jersey because the theater he bought with Lilu multi props. Yep. Um, and the many special events that they have been having there. So he's in the shape of his life, seems to be bettering himself consistently Yeah. in his later years. Um, in entertainment news, there is talk of a mall rats too. Yep. And a continuation of dogma in some capacity. He finally buckled and reluctantly made offers to Harvey Weinstein's attorney for dogma yeah. that were turned down, one for 250000 another one for 500000 and finally found a willing company to make an offer to Harvey's attorney that the attorney will entertain, fingers crossed. Initially, all production of Dogma has not been signed off by Kevin because he doesn't want Weinstein to get a dime. So yeah. the new Dogma. Um, one other thing, let's full recap. And then Talk of More Reps 2 sparked again, went thanks to Lilo Multiprops, who got Lee and London together 
again with Kevin for a private signing at a theater event, much like they got Clerks 3 made by getting Jeff Anderson in the room with Kevin, thanks to Lilo Multiprops. Yeah. So in all these autographs, Lilo Multiprops is, is apparently, you know, very good at getting these people together for signings. Oh, but good. Kind yeah. of massaging them into... Hey, you know, uh, look, I know you don't want to do mall rats, but why don't you hear Kev out about what his ideas are for it? And at least you'll give him that much, and then it gets made. So. Yeah, I mean, good for Kevin. I mean, you know, like we said, we're both huge Kevin Smith fans. Um, I had just Literally, brought up that information because I was watching Fat Man on Batman. He was talking about quitting right. weed. Um, and he looks great, you know, so good for him, man. Yeah. And, you know, as I know from from other pot smokers that sometimes they like to take some time off and they yeah. go back in then it's full steam ahead yeah so good for him yeah we we, we love you kevin don't worry about it I'm, I'm excited for the uh the snyder cut of jersey girl like That's we said right. last week and uh we're, we're always on your right. team are we ready for music news you bet your ass That's right. On Monday, we do arms. <laughs> yeah, if you, I, I see you looking. If you really want to know. Right, yeah. down, right down there in the bottom. Oh, what are we, 121? No, my, my watch keeps buzzing for some reason. Oh, it's me. I'm sending you sex. I'm, I'm sexting you. What are you wearing? It keeps telling me I got to do more you know stuff. I'm about about fucking the, sitting down. You know what I love about the Apple Watch, though? I could send you a dick pic on your Apple Watch, and it's life-size. Ah, see, this is a Fitbit. It's not an Apple Watch, oh. so... Anyway. Way to fucking ruin my joke. Yeah. So anyway, on the music news, um, really there's not much as far as new releases go. I seem like I say that every week, but honestly, this week was a little great. slow. Really not that much. I wanted to touch base on two things that we talked about last week. Ooh. Uh, go for it. As kind of like a follow-up, uh, how do you do? Um, first one we talked about was the whole kiss thing. Yeah. Uh, last week, Ace was on Eddie Trunk. Ooh, yeah, did Ace blow up their spot? <laughs> no. Fucking pussy. It, I know. It, it was one of those things where I love Ace. I I think he's entertaining as fuck. I love his solo stuff. Um, he was on Eddie Trunk last week talking about, like, you know, because Paul made a comment on Howard Stern about, you know, the band. If, if they would have performed at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, they would have called themselves Piss because it would have sounded like that. So Ace took offense to it. And he goes, I'm coming back. If I don't get a formal apology from Paul in a week, I'm going to go on and talk stuff that's going to ruin their career. Mm. So I'm like, oh, okay. You know, speculate, speculate. Um, And he came on and they made a big deal. Everybody on the internet, you know, YouTube was talking about, oh, what's he going to say, blah, 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 blah. At this point. Paul must have been pissing his pants. Yeah. You know what Paul did is that. Ace revealed on the pod, on the, on the radio show, it's actual radio show. Um, you know, he's like, well, I got a call from Paul Stanley Ooh. the minute uh, the interview was over. So he was like, oh, this is interesting. It's Paul's number, blah, 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 blah. And uh, he picks up the phone and he goes, you know, hey, uh, what's going on, Paul? And Paul goes, fuck you. I'm not apologizing for shit. Good for you, Paul. <laughs> Don't fucking fold. And he just, I was like, wow, okay. And, uh, you know, of course, Ace tries to call up Doc McGee and all these people. No, this is his phone. I got the text. Blah, 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 blah. And then it ends up he goes on there and he goes, he, he's very religious now, apparently. And he's like, you know, uh, if I if I go and say all this stuff, I'm going to stoop to their level. So I'm just not. I'm like, oh, eye for an eye, motherfucker. Yeah, I'm not even that. It's just like, don't don't make a statement like that and then come back and go, yeah. You know, yeah, it's all right. He can apologize. I'm like, just, oh man, talk about edging gone wrong. Oh God! (laughs) So there was that, and then there was another. uh, We had talked last week about um, the old playing the tracks. You know, I feel very uh, Eddie Trunk this week because you Uh, know this is all his freaking nonsense that he always talks about. Except they, I don't name called, drop. Um, um, backing tracks. Yes, yes. So As opposed back- to just playing along to the album. This isn't the girl you know, it's girl you know, it's from Millie Vanilli. This is like, you know, they... It Actually, if you want to really, you know, let, let, let's light the internet on fire. When my band opened up for uh, Public Enemy, oh. name drop. See, now I really do feel like Eddie Trunk because I'm name dropping like a fool. Good for you. Um, when we went and opened up for Public Enemy at the Sting... Um, Public Enemy, first of all, one of the all-time greats, right? 
I don't, they're awesome. And that particular show, uh, we're playing with our heroes and we're like, oh my God, this is great. You know, it's going to be packed. Everything's going to be awesome. We get there. It was a bad snowstorm. Uh, Chuck D had food poisoning. Oh. <laughs> so as he's rapping, he's going off and puking into a bucket, <laughs> coming back on. The guy had never missed a beat. Good for um, him. But you could tell when they were rapping, they would, you know, do some rapping and then they would move their mouth away or stop and you could still hear oh, the boy. rapping. And I was like, ooh. <laughs> you know, kind of like singing along to the radio. So um, apparently a lot of bands do this. Um, so, you know, Mick had said, or we had talked about backing tracks. Now, some more stuff came out on Mick Mars from Not Motley Crue. Old, old Count Chocula. Count Chocula. <laughs> came out. Wow. Love Mick Mars. Um you know, you forget when you listen. They, they, because they had the, the the catch everybody up. You know, uh, they Motley Crue, uh, two thousand fifteen. They quit. They quit. They signed a contract on TV. We're never gonna play live again. This is our end thing. They finished. Cut to twenty twenty two. Hey man, guess what? We're back together and we're going out again. That's why I never. Any band that says we're done. Never believe it because they'll come back five years later. Um, so now they come back and, like, we're, you know, we're back. We're better than we're ever. ever. We're, we're back. back. <laughs> and you're like, okay, who's going to pay for this? Because, look, I'm a huge Motley Crue fan, right? Shout out right. to the devil. Influential. Nikki Six used to be one of my fucking bass gods. I'm like, this guy is so cool, you know? Um, cut to, you know, 2022 or something like that. They're still doing the same shit. Vince sounds horrible. Oh, yeah. Tommy Lee still talks like he's a fucking dude bro from like a 20-year-old. He acts like an idiot. Um, the only, you know, Nikki is in his own dream world. Um, the only one was old Count Chocula. He yeah. freaking, he always, the guy had, he has a spinal injury, like disease that he's like curled over. He looks like a like a corpse. You know, the last couple to So, they do this reunion tour. He goes back out there. The guy fucking kills it. You forget when they they did this whole thing with John Five where he was playing riffs to Motley Crue right before he was touring with them. Like, look at all the... And you forget, like, man, these are cool riffs that all Mick wrote. So cut to this year. They go, hey, guess what? We're doing it again. And Mick Mars goes, dude, I'm like on death's door. I don't... We said we're not going to do this anymore. I don't want to do this anymore. The last tour we went to, we were all playing on tracks. I was the only one that was performing live. So, which made me wonder, we've all seen the Vince Neil singing every other song at Out of Breath and Horrible. Right. Don't sound like he's singing the back of tracks to me. Sounds fucking shitty. <laughs> but I digress. So Mick goes, I'm out. I, I won't tour, but, you know, you can have John 5. You know, he loves you guys. Go play. I'll still record music. If you want to do like a one-off thing, I'll do it. But I can't tour anymore. I'm like, you know. So much pain. So much pain crippled. Feel really bad for the guy. So what does Motley Crue do when uh, this happens? They, uh, you know, kick him out of the band. Like his 25% stake in the royalties now down to 5%. Oh. Uh, dropped them out of all these other things, basically kicked them to the curb. Oh, shit. And the whole statement of, like, Mick's our brother, we're <clears> not going to do this. So now Mick goes, fuck you, I'm suing your As ass. As he should. <laughs> you know? And he dropped that, you know, Nikki Six hasn't played a note on bass in the whole last tour. It's all freaking tracks. And you're like, now, look, I'm not Getty Lee. I'm not even fucking Fred Lee. Um, but I can play Nikki Six freaking bass lines. Shit, you could play Nikki Six bass lines. It's not hard. Why does he need backing tracks? So, um, those were the two big. Well, you know, those Motley Crue bass lines are like you know so intricate. Yeah, you know, and he, you know, I like. I always thought Nikki Six, you know, as far as bass playing, growing up as a kid in the in the eighties and nineties, like he was badass. He had the freaking stripes. He had the big hair and the, the ba- you know. You know, he was next to Gene Simmons, one of my freaking favorites. Gods, yeah, back then. They were, like, amazing. 
Now it's like you're tarnishing this him and Gene and all these guys that I looked up to. Maybe I sound like a bitter old man, which I probably am. But like, come on, man, just freaking, you know, get out while the getting's good and, yeah. and just stop. Other than that, don't really, become a parody of yourself. Yeah, and that's that's all I'm gonna say about those two things. I mean, so other put, so you won't buy it. Uh, yeah, new music wise, really, I looked through the Discover. Um, uh, if you're interested, Linkin Park did a, a reissue of Meteora. No, um, you forget, man. Linkin Park, Chad Bennington. I mean, I pref- how do we not know? You read all his lyrics for all these songs; they're all just like depressing and like, oh yeah, you know, uh, the world shine. You know, all these things. It's just like somewhere I belong. Like he, it was like. The last album should have just been called Cry for Help. Because <laughs> you know, the oh, poor shit. guy is like... And uh, you forget. you When you go into it... Uh, I listened to it a little bit today. Just because we didn't really have a lot of new music. Um, you know, and then talking about Kiss. They released a live... Kiss of the off the soundboard. Live in Poughkeepsie. <laughs> what? It- live in Poughkeepsie. Yeah, right there. Whoa, hold on. Yeah, Kiss off the soundboard, live in Poughkeepsie. Where in Poughkeepsie? Probably the fucking chance. Mid-Hudson Civic Center. Uh, oh, wait. What tour? Uh, It doesn't say. Because I'm only... Uh, uh, that's the concert I went to with, like, fucking Joe Tama. Uh, it doesn't say what year. It just says off the sound... Wait, if we look... Oh, November 1984. They got some good songs. I mean, you know, as much as I like the goof on Kiss, I mean, they got on this, they got Under the Gun, they got War Machine, they got Young and Wasted, which you never hear anymore. Uh, oh, Susanna. I don't know. Lick it up. I mean, I'm interested to listen to it. 84, so that would have been... Yeah, uh, I would have been 12. I don't know. Yeah, no. I saw them on the Animalized mm. Tour, so it was after Lick It Up. Yeah, I th- actually, I saw him for Lick It Up, I think. I didn't see him with Vinnie Vincent. They were didn't have makeup. Was and... this for Lick It Up? If it's Young and Wasted, I would say 84 would be Lick It Up. Um, wow. Because, yeah, Animal Lies was right after Lick It Up. So I miss Vinnie Vincent, that old freaking tranny. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I think this is the show that me and my brother went to with Joe Tama. You probably did. And Joe Tama's parents, I think... Dad and mom and dad drove us. Yeah, I went to uh, Kiss. My first concert ever at a stadium was Kiss on the Animalized tour. That's like uh, when Bruce Kulick just joined because Mark St. John was out. Right. Uh, and opening up for it was Wasp. The, the first album, they were at the, the Soul Blades and the Drinking of the Skull and the Blood yeah. Skull. It was great. It was great. Mm. You know, I was a longtime Kiss fan ever since that. Um, so yeah, those really. I mean that the, the soundboard what, one. Check that out. There's a lot of reissues. Really, no music. I mean, there was that one band, Die Humane, yeah. um, who's got the guitar player from Exodus. I will say before Drake's we, got some new music too. So Drake, yeah, does he make those cakes? The little oh, duck. I love him. <laughs> him and the Jonas Brothers. Really? Oh, that's right. Jonas Brothers got a little uh, Cracker Barrel song. Cracker Barrel. Cracker, yeah. Cracker Barrel. I don't even know her. <laughs> and I also put on the playlist. The only thing I put on the playlist for the. Uh, for that is uh, we we talked about Yellow Jackets with Juliet Lewis. Right. I put one of her songs from her. Uh, oh, good, Juliet so, Lewis and the and the licks and the slits. Yeah, the slits. That's a different band. Oh. Um, but yeah, before I finish up the music news, um, you know, uh, Sackofsin dot com. You know, uh, we got a lot of really good bands that just reached out to me, so we got good. some new ones coming in here. There's a band called Out of My Head. We just I added am. to the sack. Um. Great, like metal, like I don't, know, I don't know how to describe them. They're very, I want to say '90s, 2000, maybe metal. Um, very catchy, great. Uh, Cardboard Dreamhouse is another band that reached out to me. Um, we're setting up their page. Their okay. music's awesome. So I added their stuff onto the Sack of Sin playlist. So you got a nice. lot of playlists to listen to. So um, definitely check out those bands. Um, that's pretty much it for me on the music stuff. Boobies in the look at that old Lobot. <laughs> look, I will say if you're on uh, Xbox or PlayStation 
and you play Call of Duty, please change your clan tag to HPWN. Yes. Join our clan. You don't have to shave your head for this clan. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, I got to get into that. That's what I'm, yeah. I'm using on there. I know you don't like first-person shooter games. You just like to roam the world. I do. I, I like to roam the earth like Kung Fu. That's right. <laughs> just don't hang yourself in a fucking closet. That's right. <laughs> Old David Carradine. <laughs> Old David Carradine. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, man, we did it, and we did it strong. Yeah, uh, so, I did yeah. it. So just a little house cleaning. You know, sackofsin.com, like I said, be on the lookout this weekend. I'm setting up pages for a lot of new bands that are coming in out of my head. Um, uh, Cardboard Dreamhouse was another one I talked to today. So the the, the lineup's getting bigger. So we're working on Sack of Sin Showcase 2, SOSS 2, we've been calling it. Um, Outdoor venue. I really got to speak to the guy um, about the the venue itself. So once we get that set up. We're looking in the Westchester area, right? Yeah. We're looking like Salmer's Purdy's area. Purdy's. Next stop, Purdy's. <laughs> stand, stand clear of the closing doors. Um, yeah, so we're looking at that area for the summer. It's gonna be a freaking banger. I mean, cool. we got we got a lot of really good bands on the. Uh, I actually listened to the Sackasin playlist because um, I added those new guys on there and I gave all those bands a, a spin. I mean, you know, Cosmic Error. The Human Fun, 49 Feet High, uh, Spike Polite, you know, obviously our friends, Moonlight Initiative. I mean, they're all our friends. Blue Alien Mystic, my band, band. Critically Ashamed, we're all on there. We got a good list coming. So this upcoming summer showcase, we need you guys all to come out. And also, uh, two more things. You see the little donate thing on there. Make sure to scan that QR code. Throw us a couple bucks. You know, got to keep the lights on here. Greg was very poor this week. You know, I got thousands of dollars in car repairs. I'm gonna do. Jeez Louise. You know, we got to keep the lights on here. Look, my boy's got to grow hair. Oh. <laughs> Look I'm, at the treatments he's I'm doing. I'm so stressed <laughs> about money that I pulled all my hair out. So. That's right. And not the hair on your head. Oh, oh so, just, so yeah. I mean, if you, if you feel charitable, donate to the podcast. We're always looking for help. Uh, we're always looking for volunteers for Sack of Sin, for the street team. Um, and also, besides our regular merch, which um, we did sell some shirts recently. Thank you, Thomas, whoever you are. If you want to save yourself some money but still support the podcast. Yep. There is a spot on the sackofsin.com uh, if you click on the Sack of Sin sweatshop. That's right. You can buy directly from us. That's stickers, right. t-shirts, homemade, down That's in right. the basement with a Pittsburgh toilet. Old school style. 